OK, now, the government has announced that it is considering upping the age of free NHS prescriptions to 66, no. and many people have been left outraged by this. Or dead. <laughs> that's, that's what they'll be. Because you find when you hit 50, you'll start getting prescriptions and things will start, your hearing will start to go, Can't your wait. eyesight starts to go. I know. But then why are they trying to make up the age you to 66? Why? Because look how high the tax burden is already. So they don't have the magic money tree. We have to, if everyone's living to nearly 100, they've mm. got to pay for all of this. Well, you see, that's why, thank goodness... You'll be dead before we have to worry no, about it. The, the oh. world is not ruled by <laughs> wicked soulless people like you but anyway is it fair i, think, I, I ask is. you is it fair that over 60s uh, are entitled to free tv licenses i didn't know them. what am i paying you know for you are you are a walking to... disaster i well, can scam I... the life out of right, you right i'm getting onto this today so i can have a free tv license yeah. i can have free prescriptions yeah. free bus pass free bus pass free trains you should probably get some discounts on mm. all sorts of things well here to talk about this um don Neeson, uh, this morning who believes older generations are being demonised. May I point out, though, yeah. nowhere near 60 herself. Just in <laughs> case anyone was wondering. Yeah. No, not yet 60, that's no. true. She's 59. What, she's not. What, 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 she's I'm eight. 58, you cheeky so-and-so. Well, so. well, well, anyway, there we go. We're also joined by the co-founder of the Intergenerational Foundation, that's Angus Hampton, who's over the 60 mark. But, Angus, you think that... Um, people of our age and our generation have it easy and you would like to see the distribution of uh, money and, uh, I don't know how to describe it, um, um, I can't, what word benefits, benefits. Um, uh, she, uh, I don't know. So there's <laughs> well, the anyway. baby boomers have it easy, essentially, what you think? The baby boomers are the richest generation ever and th there's also an element of entitlement. We've, we, I suppose, my generation too, we've started, we've come to expect things. I mean, the free TV licence, fortunately, has actually changed. That used to be for anyone who was over 75 or some, someone over 75 in the household, but now it's been limited to only those who are on pension benefit. And that should be the same for many of these other benefits that, that, that my generation get. Um, and uh, with... Is the argument that um, the cost in actually policing that or... Uh, authorising that is so much? That's one argument that has been put, that the cost of doing means testing is too high. Um, the other argument is we need to help people who are um, genuinely in need. And we are doing that, but the problem is we're including in that all people like me mm. who really don't need these benefits, free yeah. public transport um, and, and, and so on. And so it, we've really got to think that it's not just about the money. It's also about how we look at different generations. What we're doing is we're telling younger people that older people are more important. It's the message we're sending about society. But they are. But they are. I mean, did you not feel... I mean, I sit and feel, yes, there's some of these things I may not need, of course, but I feel I've paid my dues. I feel I've put in the experience. I feel the pressure should come off me now at some stage. So do you feel that once you get to past state retirement age, you shouldn't pay national insurance? Yes, I do. Right. OK, you well... Paid, you've paid... Well, I've paid it my whole life. Yeah, but it turns out that what we paid in, your generation, my generation, we're a few days apart in, in age, that what we, what we paid in wasn't enough mm -hmm. to sustain the sort of state that we want. Well, listen, I can almost hear the chorus of outrage from our viewers and listeners up and down the country. They don't like hearing that baby boomers are entitled and wealthy and shouldn't be entitled to free prescriptions. Dawn... You agree with them? I, do, I think when it comes to an entitled generation, I totally disagree. I think the entitled generation are the younger generations today. I think the number of pensioners in relative poverty in the UK is rising. One in five pensioners, that's more than two million people now, are living in poverty. This demonisation of older generations is appalling. I mean, you know, there's a lot of loneliness. Healthcare is appalling for older people. You know, the UK state pension is one of the worst in Europe. I mean, it's 58% of previous earnings from work. And, you know, more than 2.7 million people, inactive people in this country, not, not earning, are under 25s. You know, when I was 25, I was out working round the clock. And I, I, older people deserve everything they get, I'm sorry. And if you don't want those benefits, don't accept them. You don't have to. So that's fair enough. If you feel like you're comfortable enough without your benefits, don't accept them. Let them go to pensioners that do it. But stop demonising older people. Well, I think you're wrong about that. I think there are actually a lot of very wealthy older people 
people over 60. I mean, we did a study and we found that there were 3 million mm. people over 60 who are millionaires, if you include the value of their, it, the their value house, of their house. And their pension. The, the yeah, but it's, for young, from a young person's point of view, it's still real wealth. And three million is one in four. I guess a lot of people are living in, especially in London and the South East, are living in huge houses. They can barely afford to heat because of the cost of living crisis. Absolutely. And because on paper they are worth a lot of money. That doesn't make them millionaires. That makes them, a lot of them are, as we've just discussed, and these are official government figures, living in poverty. Oh, they, need to, they need to downsize, sell the house, buy a flat. Oh, that's really easy just to sell a house at the moment, of course, yeah. Yeah, it's quite practical. It's only it's, a question of price. I house mean, values are still quite high. Angus, Dawn's talking about the increasing numbers of pensioners living in poverty. We're also seeing an increasing number of children being brought up in, in relative poverty, working poverty, working poor. Yeah, that's a real problem too. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, but one of the things is if, we, if we're too generous to the baby boomers, we're less able to afford all these things to help those in their 20s and those, I think you're referring to broadly, in their 30s. I think it is hard for younger people, but again, the onus and the pressure of subsidising younger people goes on parents. And a lot of parents and grandparents are in a situation where they're not enjoying their whatever wealth they have. And also, they've got to think, if they are living longer, how do they pay for their own health care? Absolutely, yes. So many people want to save for those things and they want to help their children. But... I mean, we, the message we've sent to young people is that they've got to work very hard, they'll be paid minimum wage, the house, housing will be very expensive, and on top of that, they'll have, mm -hmm. if they've um, been to university, their to, student debts will mean they'll have to do pay you know, I, I very hate to be, high I hate to be controversial, Angus, because I do have a lot of sympathy for, for young people and what they're going through, but has it not been hard for every generation? I mean, I started working when I was 10 years of age, doing a paper round and then doing a milk round. And, uh, you know, I haven't stopped working since. And uh, I've always done mm, two, quite. three jobs in a day or whatever. Here's this woman quite, never absolutely. stops as well. And but maybe it's something in our psyche that you know what it was like not to have had money and therefore you, you work and you graft and you grind. I think very few people feel that they're well off, Don. Absolutely. And can I just say that, you know, when, when I was younger, roughly the same generation even, mm. um, you know, inflation in the 1970s was the highest. Um, unemployment was the highest. We were, it wasn't easy being young people when we were young. So, and, and we worked hard all our lives. We've paid in. You know, the pension isn't a benefit. It's something you've worked hard and you've contributed to all your life. Same with national insurance. So why can't we treat older people with the respect they deserve? They've earned this. I think that's that's not a right. good word, respect. I think well, let, respect was out the window. Let, let Angus have a final but, word on this. But that's not right, because older people have much more housing wealth than younger people are likely ever to get. They have much more generous pensions than y younger people are ever likely to get. Um, and they're, they're, they're paying less tax. So mm. you're, you're telling someone watching this programme now who's sitting freezing in their no, big house no, that not. they are well off and they should consider themselves lucky. I'm no, sorry, I find that appalling. No, we're, we're, we're very concerned about poorer, older people. We're not so well, millionaires because they've got expensive properties that they can't sell. Well, there's, there's, there's value there that one way or another they can crystallise. One possibility is to have a lodger so there's more intergenerational mixing. And, of course, the government have helped sensibly with that and said that income from lodgers up to 7,500 is tax-free. So, so there are things they can do. I think 7,500 would probably pay the bills. And, and Angus, so, yeah. uh, um, do you have the ear of government on this, this intergenerational foundation? What do you actually do? What can you achieve? Where are you making progress? Are you making progress? Absolutely, yes. We, we, we speak to policymakers and politicians all the time, and uh, we, they are... They are mindful of this. Quite often they're in the difficult position that um, off air or behind closed doors, they recognise the plight of younger people, but publicly they need to be very supportive of the older generation because there are more of them and they're more likely to vote. OK, that's it summed up. Uh, guys, really appreciate that. Don, thank Angus, you. thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.